why I don't blindly invest into the S&P 500. I'm Nate, I'm the Fit Future MD, upload every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Pick up the free copy of the Nutrition and Workout Guide in the description below. I'm currently down 40 pounds. And if you're interested in how I did that, pick up that free copy of the Nutrition and Workout Guide. I'm the owner of Intersale, Intersale's family. Together we rise up from humble beginnings to inspire others all over the world with the messages on our t-shirts. Wear your inspiration today. So, you hear a lot of this BS out there about blindly investing into mutual funds, into the S&P 500, and things like and ETFs, stuff like that, right? People's funds. And yeah, you know, maybe there's an owner of an ETF out there that is just excellent at picking stocks, right? Whatever it is. You know, but why should you not just blindly invest into a, a S&P 500 index fund? Well, number one reason, the number one reason, <clears throat> the number one reason is that there is only 52 companies left from the original S&P 500 that came out in 1955, right? So what does that tell you? That tells you that 90% of the companies, I don't know what the actual math is, it's 10% made it, so, you know, that's nine, so 90% of the companies that are on the S&P 500 will not be there eventually, will go out of business, right? And so that means you're basically investing in something that 90% are going down, right? And yeah, the say that top, say that top ten percent brings you up enough or has enough growth to get you that eight or ten percent, but you're just staying with it, right? Like it's a, you know, they're basically telling you that you're fully diversified or whatever, but your ninety percent chance going down right so that, you know just you know i'll put it to you this way you're basically putting you know instead of being diversified in stocks that are going up you're being diversified in stocks that are all going down it's set for 50 of them right historically since 1955 right now every year there's a new company that ipos you know they have a, a new product you know stuff like that um a lot of times the reason the big boys are still around like the reason johnson and johnson's still around is because they're buy they buy up companies you know so they, they get a company with a proven product they buy it up and add it to their portfolio you know procter and gamble did the same thing you know they didn't necessarily innovate to to survive, right? They they bought up companies, and so companies like that, you know, they're probably going to continue to be around because, you know, every time there's a successful company, well, that, uh, you know, they'll throw enough money at the entrepreneur to get them to sell their company or to sell at least sell a part of it, right? Or a big portion. So, you know, keep that in mind you know, when you go looking for companies. But um, to me personally, I don't invest in blindly in index funds. Now, you should know about the stock market, how the stock market works, right? How the charts work, right? How does the system invest, right? So say, you know, everyone has a 401k and gets paid every two weeks. Well, when does that uh, money actually go into the market? And can you see it when it goes into the market, right? So if everybody's putting their money into, you know, blindly into a 401k and it's going into a fund, when does that fund buy, right? When it receives that money, does it hold on to that money? You know, or does it, you know, go in at night? Does it go in a day? Like, you need to know these things, right? 
I think that's the biggest thing for me is that you shouldn't do anything blindly. You should understand how things work, right? You sh um, you know, when, you know, in the interview process and stuff like that, people ask general basic questions. Nobody asks the secondary question, right? You know, and that's why I love my wife because my wife is good at asking that secondary question that I would never think of, right? So I try to explain everything to her because she's going to come up with a secondary question that are, you know, she's basically protecting my blind spot. She's the queen, right, on the chessboard, right? And I'm, I would never come up with those questions, right? Like, oh, that's how it works? Cool. We're moving on. <laughs> when she's going to ask tertiary questions that, that I don't even see, right? And so you definitely need to do that when you start thinking about investing, right? Like you, you're not going to be a blind investor. You're going to have a certain strategy that you choose, you know, and you need to know when that strategy is going to be effective and when it's not, right? You need to know the holes in this strategy. Like if you're a, a value investor, like you need to know when like value investing is not going to work, right? Like, you, you know, if you, if you blindly invest into S&P 500, know that 90% of your money is going to zero, right? 90% of the companies you invest in are going to zero, right? So, so right now in the S&P 500, big tech is making a big comeback, right? Because they, you know, the reason tech was going down is because of interest rates, right? So big tech, you know, they work a lot on borrowed money. And so it was gonna cost them a lot more money you know, if you started getting to nine, ten percent interest rates, they were all going to go out of business because their their business model wasn't going to be profitable, right? Or it made it a lot harder to be profitable. Even big uh, tech giants, you know, still use debt. So, you know, Apple still uses debt, right? And it's the biggest company in the world. So, think about that, right? But, you know. But that's why you saw that, right? You saw those big that big dip. Well, as soon as they say, oh, well, we're cutting rates, big tech makes a big jump, and all of a sudden the S and the, the S and P five hundred looks good again. Still, nine you know ninety percent of those companies are going to go bankrupt. They're going they're going to be done, right? Or they're going to be bought up by somebody, you know, because they're losing, right? So keep that in mind. That's the biggest reason you don't invest blindly into the S and P five hundred. Right. Let's say, and I'm not a, uh, you know, I'm not a financial advisor. This is just what I believe, right? I just believe that you shouldn't invest in things that you don't understand, right? That's why I think real estate is so great for most people because most people understand real estate and where they live, right? Most people know, oh, I want to live on that side of town. You know, I don't want to live on this side of town. But most people know it's like, oh, well, most people know like, oh, nobody's gonna rent that. You know, not for that price. You know, you'll have a line out the door to rent that, right? So, you know, people know these things, right? It's, it's natural to know that where you live. Whereas, you know, or they'll say, oh, that area floods, you know, so I'm not gonna buy over there, right? People, people see that, no problem. But nobody even investigates companies. Like, well, well where, where, where is this company making all its products? You know, why is it, you know, having so much trouble, right? If the stock is down, if the stock is up, why is the stock up, right? And it really takes less than 10 minutes a day to do this, right? I run a screener, you know, based on my criteria, you know, you'll have your own criteria and whatever comes up, I investigate those companies. It usually takes 10 to 20 minutes a day, right? And most of the time, you know, the answer is no, I'm not investing today, All right? I don't see a winner here, All right? And that's, that's my investing strategy. And I also don't hold on to them, right? I'm not a holder because, you know, I'm not trying to put half a million dollars into the market. I'm trying to make, you know, maybe 6,000 a year into multiple millions, right? Not one million. 
you know, like I say, I'm not making deposits every month like they're telling you. Like I, you know, the the way you expand, the way you get wealthy is to take the money you make and invest it, right? So you have to make more money, right? So, you know, most of my money goes into my business, right? Whether it be product, whether it be uh, ads for the business, you know, uh, software for the business. Um, so, you know, so my investing strategy in the stock market is, is might be different than yours when you're not doing stuff like that, right? If you're, if you know you're stagnant in your position, you're going to stay in the same position for 30 years, you may do a different strategy, right? Well, you know, you know, that's not my strategy. So, um, keep that in mind. Guys, like I say, blindly investing to the S&P 500 is, is dumb. Blindly investing into VTI, you know that's the worst, right? Not to talk shit about VTI specifically, but um, basically the total stock market. But blindly investing to the total stock market, you know that's not going to be good, right? You know, you're only going to be getting the ones that pop off, right? Everything else is going to zero. Nine... I didn't even realize this, but 90% of small businesses fail, right? So apparently 90% of big businesses fail too, right? So, you know, keep in mind, don't blindly invest in the S&P 500. Learn about the stock market, learn what you're doing, learn how to investigate companies, what makes a good company, what makes a bad company, right? Are they expanding? Are they decreasing? Are they maintaining their sales? You know, where are they located? Is that a business friendly place? You know, all kinds of stuff. Do they have uh, unions kicking their ass? You know, whatever. So keep that in mind. I'm Nate, I'm the Fit Future MD. Shop at insercell.com. Learn and prepare for success. And we'll see you in the next one. Peace.